What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we are playing with a Mercedes Vito. If you've ever heard a Mercedes and you've heard a chuffing noise, bit of a blown exhaust, most of the time it's on a, uh, the injector seals. The copper washers, they wear out, uh, you start to get a chuffing noise, don't sound good, you can smell it in the cab, it's no good. So I thought I'd show you how we're going to get on with this today. It is always easier to work on a warm engine. So. I have let it run for a bit. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've got the air box stripped out already. And if you can hear that chuffing noise, it's one of the injectors here. It's the back one on this one, unfortunately. It's the back one, unfortunately, on this one. A bit fiddly, but uh, I'm going to do all four seals. And uh, yeah, you might as well do all four while you're there. As I say, it's easier to work on a warm engine. It's nice and warm now, so let's turn that off, because that is a racket. Let's turn that off. So, what you want to do is, you need to get all four fuel lines off, you need to take the return lines off, and then unplug the clips. Order four new washers, four new bolts, they are stretch bolts, so it's always good to uh, four new bolts. I have already pulled these clips out. I'll show you what I mean. Be extra careful when you pull these out. These bad boys go in there. Four little clips, pull them out. As I say, be careful when you pull them out because they do just ping. And if you lose one, it's the right pain in the backside. Get this clip out. I'm going to get the stand out so you can see what's going on. Uh, so I've got two hands. Get these uh, return lines off. Get the main fuel lines off, which are 14 mil, and uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. So as I say, be careful when you get these little clips out, because when they ping, they go quite far. All four out. Be careful when you're getting these return lines out, because they're quite brittle, and if you break one now, the motor's stuck in your way for a little while. I've got a flathead screwdriver, and I'm pulling both sides. There's one. And now, as I say, lift from one side, pop from the other. Go easy, because they do break easy. All four out. I'm just going to put that to one side. It's the same for most Mercs. The four-cylinder engines, the six-cylinders, the five-cylinders. It's all the same. We've got a T. We've got a T40 Torx that holds the clamp down, that holds the injector down, and these are all 14 mil. 40 mil on the fuel lines, nice and easy. I'll get them cracked off. They shouldn't be too tight, and when you're doing them up, don't over tighten them because then you'll end up sort of ruining them, crushing the ends. I'll get all these off. On Mercedes, most of the time, all these fuel lines are exactly the same, so you can get them sort of mixed up. It doesn't matter what way they go. On other brands of cars that you're doing the, uh, getting the injector pipes off, they are different. So then you need to number them, one, two, three, four, or you could be there all day trying to get the pipes to go back on. As I say, luckily on Mercedes, they're normally all the same. Fuel lines off, gonna unclip the fuel injectors, nice and easy, be careful, because it is brittle. Push the tab at the back, give it a wiggle. There's one. Do the same for all four, and then I'll get the T40 out. And it was definitely number four that was gone on this one, because it was quite hard to get the injector clip off. And I couldn't squeeze it down, so I got a pick and I just lifted the front up, wiggled the wire off, no problem. All four are off. Now I'm using a T40 in a small bit and a 10mm ratchet spanner. You can use any kind of T40 as long as it reaches in there nice. And uh, they normally go with a crack. One thing to point out, if the injector seal's been chuffing for quite a while, there's probably a load of carbon buildup in the bolt. And then you'll end up rounding the torx bit off and that's a right pain in the backside. So if that's the case, then you need to get a small pick or a really small screwdriver and just dig the carbon out of the bolt to make sure the T bit goes all the way to the bottom. Otherwise you might end up rounding it. But uh, sometimes they go with a bit of a crack. Just take your time and get all four out. As I say, it's the same for Sprinter. Uh, VO, the Mercedes cars, the CL, uh, C class, E class, all the injector seals are the exact same process to get them out. 
I won't bore you with getting all four bolts out, so I'll get straight to it. All four bolts out, wasn't too hard. Now, what I'm gonna do, before you take your injectors out, if you're gonna take them all out in one go, they need to go back in the same hole. Each injector has a code on the top, and if you swap them over, you then need to recode the injectors. Bit of a pain if you haven't got a computer, because then you've got to go somewhere, and you can't really drive it, because all the flow rates are different on the injector. When you pull the injector out, if it's been crudded up, it's been chuffing for a while, there's gonna be a load of black stuff and it's quite hard. You don't want that to fall down in the holes. So if possible, give it a little dig out, a bit of a blow out with a blower, and just make sure nothing's gonna fall in. I'll show you how I get the injectors out. I'm gonna use a 30 mil spanner and that fits on where the fuel line goes on. There's another union that screws into the injector. That I'm gonna use as a bit of a leverage point. You can use flat edge down one side, Basically, you want to twist the injector left to right. Yeah, it moved a bit then. Just a bit of twisting. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. A bit of twisting. And when it's loose, start to pull it up. Pull it up whilst keep twisting. Back and forth, back and forth. As I say, if it's been blowing a while, it can be a lot harder. I have picked the cleanest injector to show you how it's done. So we'll be effing and jeffing on the fourth one. But here we go. I'm lifting while going backwards and forwards. I'm just going to pull. That's the clamp. That goes one way. And there we have. Make sure nothing's going to fall in. Injector number one, and I'm lucky that the seal, the copper washer, is still on the bottom. Sometimes they're in there. I'll get to uh, I'll get to that in a minute on if some of them are, have stayed in the head. But I've got number one injector out, number one seal, nice and easy. I'm going to put this back in just for now until uh, until I get all four loose, and then I'll pull them out individually and do them one by one. That way you're not going to get confused as to which injector went in which hole. So that one's nice, that one's easy, that one won't blow in. Sliding back in, bit of a wiggle. You can also get some stuff called super crack. It, it's a bit like a brake cleaner, but it fizzes up the carbon that's built up, makes it a lot easier to get out. I don't need that just yet, so I'm going to get the other four loose uh, and I'll get you back. three are out and to my delight the last one which I thought was going to be a right pain in the backside has just slipped out now this ain't one of them YouTube videos where I'm going to say yeah they all just pull straight out because that is lying that's taken me about half hour of wiggling them all backwards and forwards backwards and forwards number two was hard I'm glad I used number one as an example on the video because number two is a pain all four are out I've got two in copper washers that came out with them going to give these a clean up now you can give the body of an injector a wire brush don't do anything with this end bit because there's tiny little holes on the end it's easy to clog them so you can give this part a, a wire wheel and wire brush in to make it easier to go back in but don't touch the bit on the end you can put a little bit of copper grease on them when you go back in but we'll get to that I'm gonna have a little sit down because that was a bit of a slog we'll get back to it so all four injectors out, nice and easy. Well, a bit of a wiggle, but we've got them out. Ooh. So, to get the last two copper washers out, there was two that stuck in. You get a kit like this. Now it's an injector, it's an injector cutting tool, i.e. to cut the, uh, to cut the, the, uh, the recess in the head back to clean. And it does help remove the copper washer make sure I've got the right one yes and basically you can get these on eBay 16 17 quid they do come in handy I would definitely recommend one 
and then if you can't get it out after you've used this you can use a strategically sized flathead screwdriver and you carefully once you've cleaned it out with this I have done it without one of these just by tapping the flathead screwdriver into the copper washer because the copper washer is stuck in the head that just lightly taps in there don't go too mad because you damage the cylinder head you tap that in there that sticks on it and then you can pull the copper washer out like that I'm going to give them a clean with the cutoff tool and then I'll tap the, the, the flathead in there and hopefully pull it out and see how I get on As you might have seen in halfway through the time lapse, the tool, the uh, the injector seat cutter actually pulled one of them out and then the one in cylinder four was a bit of a pain. I could see it was loose. I've got a mirror under there facing at a 45 degree angle so I can see down, then a torch and then I've got some welding wire. Bent in a strategic hook, about 10 mil long the hook is and I just spent it did take about 15 minutes and I was getting a bit hot and frustrated, but I got it out. All four injector washers out. New four have just turned up. I'm going to clean the injectors up. And remember, I'm going to do it one by one so I don't forget which one went in what hole. And then uh, we can start assembling. Boom. So I've got some of the injectors in, some are out. I'm going to clean. There is some black carbon deposits uh, around number three, cylinder three that was gone. I'm going to put three of the injectors back in, one still in, I know which is which because I've cleaned one, blah 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 etc. I'm going to put some tissue in the other holes, I'm going to get a small flathead screwdriver and just chip away at it, and then I get a blower and make sure it's nice and clean and then I'm going to run, through, run down all four cylinders with the cutter again just to make sure the surface is nice and clean, have a check with the mirror and then get the seals in. I'm going to get some tissue in cylinder three, put the other injectors in Give it a good chip out and a good blowout. One step you mustn't forget to do, this is so important. If you've had a chuffing injector seal, it's more than likely that the thread to the bolt to the clamp that holds the injector down, it's more than likely that the thread is completely clogged up. Now, if you try and screw the bolt in, you can feel the bolt is tight. That is because the thread's dirty you must clean this out. If you don't clean it out, when you try to do the injector up, you can end up just snapping the bolt off in the head, which is no good. We don't want that. Um, so you must get a tap to clean it out. And if you can see, let me just check on the camera, a bit of zoom. Yeah, check that out. That was in the bolt hole. If you'd have tried to screw the bolt into that, that wouldn't have happened. It just wouldn't have happened. You would have had either a leaky seal again or you would have snapped the bolt in there. So, done all for it. Done the first three. Just thought I'd show you the last one, how bad that is. On a Mercedes, it is just an everyday M6 tap. I use the smallest of ratchets on that because if you snap the tap in the head or in the bolt, in the thread hole, you're in a world of pain. So, I use the smallest of ratchets that come out nice and easy, got all the gear out, we don't want none of that in there. If you don't have a tap, a little cheeky tip, let's get the old focus going again. If you don't have a tap, get one of the old bolts, get an extra skinny grinding disc on your grinder and you can just cut a slit, you can just cut a slit all the way down the side of the bolt. A couple of mil slit in one side and that acts the same as a tap. So then as you screw the old bolt in, the groove in the side collects all the material, just like a tap. Best to use a tap, but if you're like, uh, if, you, if you haven't got one and you wanna get the job done, cut a groove down the side of your bolt with an extra fine, thin disc on your grinder, and that'll collect the stuff. Wind it in and out a few times. Make sure you do this. And that is exactly what I mean by if you cut a groove in, I just wanted to show you. I cut a very thin groove with my grinder. And you see all that coming out. You can't just wang a bolt in and out. It won't collect the stuff. So a very small groove, just in the end, will work as a tap. 
that's the injector. I've given it a wire wheel up on the bench uh, with a bench grinder just around here. Remember, don't don't wire wheel that. I've put some high temperature grease around the outside. New copper washers on there, and there is a little bit of grease just on the bottom to stop it falling off when I drop it on in. You can just drop the injector washer in. It's not going anywhere. It can't fall through any holes. A little bit of grease on the bottom, grease on the side. Injector face in the seat is cleaned out. Injector number one, I have the clamp. Just giving it a bit of a clean off. We want it to sit down nice and square. Remember what way, which way it come out. I know it goes down that way. Slide it in. It is easier to slide it round the injector and then drop it down. Number one done. What I will do and what I want to say is, just in case anything has dropped in, any bits of dirt or anything has dropped inside the injector ports, I've got brake cleaner and I'll just give it a little pump out just to lift any bits of dirt out. I'll carry on, do the next three, see how it runs. Getting there, almost done. What I've done, I've put the fuel lines on. I've just nipped these up by hand. I've put the fuel lines back on to hold them square where they need to be. I've clipped the wires back on. Just need to torque all these up. On a Mercedes of this variety, it's seven Newton meters and two lots of 90 degrees. So let's just get. So I've put a little bit of grease on the O-rings on the return lines just before they go back in. I've pushed them into place. Now I just give them a little tap with something heavy like a ratchet. You could use hammer, but it's tight of space. Just a little persuasion back in. Get your four clips back in. They are fiddly, don't drop them. They can be a pain, especially if you lose one. Obviously this job has been a bit harder for me today because it's on a rear wheel drive. Most Vitos I believe are front wheel drive, but this one is rear wheel drive. If you're doing it on a front wheel drive car, nice and easy. But uh, I know a lot of other Mercs are rear wheel drive. But anyway, I'm going to leave the airbox off for now. I'm going to leave the airbox off, let's fire it up. Quick wash of the hands. Now, there will be some of the uh, lubricants that have fallen into the cylinder, um, cleaning, pre-clean, WD-40, that sort of stuff. Um, I haven't given it no pre-bleeding. We should be okay. Let's have a look, see how that sounds. Now, unless I've done something really wrong, which I doubt it, it should sound a lot quieter. Oh yeah, definitely no chuffing. We're happy with that. No leaks. And the days. No more chuffing injector. Just turn that off, get the airbox on and wrap the video up. Happy with that. So, took about three hours on that today. If you're wondering on price, if you go to another garage, you're wondering on price, I'm charging £40 an injector, so that's 160 in total. That includes the uh, price of the copper washers and the new bolts, so 160 is not too bad. A couple of other more bits to do, but um, yeah, if you, uh, if you found it interesting or found it useful, have a little like, have a little subscribe, check out the other videos. On this one, me and the Merc, we're out.